I'm Tom Brokaw. The plight of the American farmer. It's a bitter harvest as debts rise and prices drop. The first of a three-part series begins tonight on NBC Nightly News. Who's the best private detective on television? Hey, Remington Steele. What? Well, the best detective team? Uh, Remington Steele, Laura Holt. Exactly. And when these two get together, they're hot. That is a stroke of good fortune. They've got style and class that can't be matched. Thank you ever so much. And this explosive duo will keep you jumping. Count on it. Remington Steel, Tuesdays at 9 on TV 11. AM 1280, WWTC, the first commercial radio station to introduce these records to the Twin Cities. All the best, unique international and exciting local music, all the time. Tomorrow's Music Today, WWTC. Social. Good, Good morning, Eleven Country! From the Twin Cities Action Center, News 11 Sunrise, your new choice for news. Good morning and welcome to Sunrise. This is February 18th. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. And it's a Monday. And usually at this point, we turn to Barry Zavan and say, good morning, what's the temperature? And if Barry Zavan is not here, we turn to Barry Finn That's and true. say, what's the temperature? Well, we're not going to turn to either of them this morning <laughs> because Barry Zavan filled in for Barry Finn, who's a little under the weather this yeah. weekend. And Barry Zavan needs a little sleep right now. You know what that leaves us with? <laughs> Don't be nice, John. <laughs> Marty has been kind enough to do the weather for us today. You yes. know more about the weather this morning than you've ever wanted to know. The most you're going to get right now is that it's 34 degrees. We'll have the details <laughs> for you a little bit later. Okay. Well, we do have the details this morning of two shooting incidents. They lead our news. Yeah, St. Paul police are looking into two separate shooting incidents that happened within hours of each other. At about 1 this morning, police were called to 699 Hague in St. Paul, where one man was shot. That man is in critical condition following surgery. He was shot in the chest. Police are looking for two men for questioning in the incident. In another shooting in St. Paul, at 1242 Hazelwood, a man was shot to death in a parking lot following a late-night dinner party. Bonificio Pedroso was dead on arrival at St. Paul Ramsey just before 11 last night. Police say Pedroso was involved in a scuffle when gunfire erupted. A suspect is in custody this morning. Now, this shooting took place just blocks away from another homicide this weekend. And homicide officials are still looking for leads this morning. Saturday, police were called to this scene on Fellows Lane of St. Paul's east side where Benjamin Gibson was found shot to death in a snowbank. Still, no one has been brought in for questioning in this case, which is now two days old. And Hennepin County authorities have until Wednesday noon to file charges against a man arrested in connection with the death of a Robbinsdale police officer. Late Friday, at this West Broadway apartment, police arrested Ronald Schneider. He's being held on probable cause in the Hennepin County Jail in the shooting death of Officer John Scanlon. Scanlon was on a burglary call at the time of his death Thursday morning. 34 degrees this morning at 632. There are two living artificial heart recipients this morning. And the latest, Murray Hayden, who received his new heart yesterday, is listed in critical condition this morning. Hayden's heart is working perfectly, officials say, and the patient's vital signs are stable. The Humana Heart Hospital in Louisville reports no snags in yesterday's operation. Now, doctors in Minneapolis are watching the outcome of the Louisville operation very closely as preparations are underway to do artificial heart implants locally. Susan Weesey has that story. Doctors who work at the Minneapolis Heart Institute have completed four of five training sessions designed to give them expertise to implant the artificial heart. Surgeons, cardiologists, and technicians from the Institute have been traveling to Salt Lake City to work closely with those who perfected the operation on laboratory animals. In one month, the Institute will ask the FDA for permission to implant the Jarvik 7 in 10 patients here in Minneapolis. 
It's the same device that was first implanted in Barney Clark, who lived 112 days. Once, he was forced to undergo emergency surgery because a valve in the heart had failed. In William Schroeder's Jarvik 7, the valves were replaced by components made here in Minneapolis. While Schroeder continues to recover from a stroke, the valves in his heart are holding up. Medtronic Incorporated manufactures the valves that are designed to endure. Made of a single piece of titanium, it opens and shuts 72 times a minute to keep blood flowing through the plastic pump. Ray Hagen of Winona is a promising candidate for the artificial heart. Without the device, his days are numbered. But doctors say Ray is still better off, at least for the time being, with his own heart. Before going ahead with the daring procedure, doctors want to be sure the mechanical heart will not only prolong Ray's life, but improve the quality of his life as well. Susan Weesey, News 11. Lawmakers at the state capitol this week have a busy week planned. IR Senator Charlie Berg plans to introduce a bill today to enforce a one-year moratorium on farm foreclosures. And also today, for the first time, the Senate holds a hearing on the mandatory seatbelt issue. Well, in other action at the capitol, efforts to buy a pro basketball team from Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. An idea being protested by some Wisconsinites on the radio. Christy Art is at the Metrodome, where there is protesting going on the air right now. Good morning, Christy. Good morning, John. Good morning, Marty. Yeah, we're here live at the Metrodome this morning. Actually, it's uh, not very live if you look out on the playing field. All the action is not out there. Instead, this morning, it's up here in the press box. We've got DJs from WQFM in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. They're broadcasting to their audience back home, and their topic is the passing of the buck, or rather the stopping of it. They're protesting the possible sale of their hometown basketball team to people in Minnesota. The Milwaukee Bucks basketball team is for sale, and last week, Governor Purpich announced that a second Twin Cities group intends to make a bid for the team. Someone that has the uh, financial wherewithal to do it as a loaner. That individual is expected to begin negotiations for the team this week. The other group, a task force headed by former Lakers star George Mikan, has already submitted a request to make an offer. The going price is said to be $20 million. And with me this morning is Steve Pallock. He's representing w, uh, F, or WQFM right. out of Milwaukee, right? What's your game plan for today? How are you uh, getting the message across to your fans? Well, we are broadcasting back to Milwaukee to let them know that we're not going to take it lying down. We're doing what we can do to help make sure the Bucks stay in Milwaukee. And if anyone here is trying to steal them, we'll do everything we can to sabotage them. But the only definite thing we've come up with so far is that when people stop us on the street and ask directions if they think we're from here, we just give them directions anyway, and they end up driving around in circles. That's about the only solid thing we've got so far, and uh, we're going to pick at the Capitol later on today. We've brought uh, signs and other paraphernalia, and we're just going to cause as much trouble as we can and, and show the people up here that we love our bucks. We're not ashamed to say it. We don't want to lose them, and we'll do whatever we can to ensure that they stay in Milwaukee and, not, and they don't come up here. Is there other support back in Milwaukee other than the four of you that are here? Yeah, there's a lot of support in Milwaukee, and about the uh, the only support that we don't have is probably from our mayor, who is uh, just trying to make sure that it doesn't cost too much money to keep the bucks in town. But they are going to try and sell to local investors first, despite the uh, carpet-bagging efforts of some uh, out-of-town oh. people. Okay, thanks for being with us this morning, Steve. As you can see, there's uh, probably not going to be a safe place to be on the streets today as we turn these guys loose on the streets of Minneapolis. Back to you, John and Marty, in the studios. <laughs> I tell you, Steve is tall enough to look like he could play for the Milwaukee <laughs> <laughs> That's true. However, if that's the enemy, I think... We have a chance. No. The <laughs> Thanks, Christy. Thanks, Christy. Coming up on Sunrise, more on basketball and who's best on the court. A look at some of the best photographs now on display. We'll list what's not going to be open on Washington's birthday. But in our day book, details of a garage that is open for big business. Those stories along with a snowy 11 outlook still to come this Monday morning on Sunrise. So stay with us. If your color prints look this bad, try Pro-X. They catch and fix color problems because they check every picture twice. Pro-X, one hour photo. And now through the end of February, with every roll of color film we process, get a second set of prints free. So with a 12 exposure roll, you get 24 prints. Uh, with a 24 roll, 48 prints. With 500, 1,000 prints, 500 million, a trillion. At all 12 Pro-X locations, including the new Pro-X at Signal Hills. Caribbean offers you a Dutch treat, 
Curaçao. Treat yourself to the tempting tempo. Curaçao. Treat yourself to beautiful beaches. Curaçao. Treat yourself to delicious native foods. Curaçao. Treat yourself to a unique culture. Curaçao. Call your travel agent for this carefree vacation tour from $459 for seven nights, including airfare and hotel. Curaçao. The Caribbean's Dutch treat. For nearly 100 years, she has stood against elements, welcoming millions with a beacon of hope. Now she's undergoing urgently needed major restoration. Won't you help preserve our nation's symbol of freedom? Please send your tax-deductible gift to WTCN-TV, Post Office Box 111, Minneapolis 55440. Don't let the sun set on an American dream. Thirty-four degrees. It's now 21 minutes before the hour. Workers at the Gillette Company in downtown St. Paul this morning will have a special visitor. Miss America, Charlene Wells, will be signing autographs starting at 11.30. Wells will be with two former Miss Americas as well. The new Miss Minnesota will also appear at Gillette this morning. Carrie Lee Johnson from Minneapolis was crowned during the pageantry yesterday at the downtown Holiday Inn. But some 20 protesters didn't like what was going on inside at the pageant and carried picket signs on Nickel Mall. And here to do the weather once again, Marty Burns Wolf. Oh, no, once again, me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm filling in for Barry Zavan this morning, who uh, worked for us this weekend and deserves a little bit of sleep right now. So uh, we're going to start out with 34 degrees this morning. And in case you're wondering, that was uh, the warmest overnight low we had since December the 11th. Right now we have partly cloudy skies. You may also have some flurries falling in your backyard this morning, as we have had scattered flurries over the night, overnight, the humidity at 82 percent, the wind out of the west right now at 17, which makes the wind chill 11, and the pressure is 30.00. Now, as for what you're expecting to, f to see right now out in the backyard, well, the radar unit shows you there. We do have some snow flurries moving through the area. They're just north and a little bit east of the Twin Cities right now. We can expect that kind of activity to continue off and on for a bit today. But what we're really interested in is a satellite photo. That shows us why all of this is happening. You can see the cloud cover now moving through the upper portion portions of the state, the lower portions of the state, sort of a diagonal line there, the low pressure system right over us. And temperatures, as you notice, to the south, well, they're a little bit warmer, 34, 33, but to the north, the 11 and the 18 degrees, well, that's what we're in for the next couple of days while we cool down before we warm up again. In terms of the map, not bad at all. That low pressure system will move off to the east taking a little bit of light snow with it. And as that trailing cold front comes through the area, our temperatures will go down and then they'll go right back up again. The forecast for you, no big surprises today. You may expect some of that snow to fall during the morning hours, but we'll clear out some this afternoon. Temperatures 32 to 37, and that feels good. Winds will remain out of the southwest tonight as it becomes partly cloudy, temperatures 10 to 15, that will feel a little more familiar. But tomorrow, we're still talking about those temperatures up in the 30s, 31 to 36. The winds will be out of the southwest at 10 to 20. Not a bad deal at all to start the week with. And I'm sure if Barry Zavan were here, he would say it's uplifting and somewhat warming. And probably worth a few eyebrows, too. Boy, it really is balmy, too. It is. It yeah. feels good. Had okay. a nice weekend. Yesterday mm. was a delightful day. Thanks, Marty. Oh, good my job. pleasure. Fantastic. My, pleasure. my goodness. You want to Coming do it next time? <laughs> Coming up, a big addition in store for the Twins. <laughs> yes, and a day off for the North Stars. Smiling. Steve Carroll has all of that next on Sunrise Sports. Holiday Travel presents Alaska and the Yukon. This deluxe tour combines motor coach, ship, and air transportation. You'll cruise the inside passage, follow the trail of 98 through the Yukon, experience the grandeur of Mount McKinley, and ride an authentic stern wheeler on the Tanana River. Highlights include Fairbanks, Anchorage, Skagway, the Matanuska Valley, and the beautiful Portage Glacier. A relaxing Alaska tour that includes all transportation, hotels, all admissions, professional tour escort, and much more. Local departures June through August. This tour will place you in the midst of Alaskan beauty starting from just $1,799. For a free brochure, call Holiday Travel in Roseville or call toll-free from any city in Minnesota. Call soon. That's right, friends. A giant used car sale is going on right now, right here, right 
here at the giant Viking Chevrolet in Fridley. Look at this. Ah, 1979 Chevy Monza automatic power steering finance it today. $49 down, $89 a month or $1,988. Hey, Mel, bring the Cavalier in here. Yeah. Here it is, friends. 1983 Chevy Cavalier with a four-speed transmission. $4,988. Let's pick up the phone and let's call that hotline today. 786-6100. Our nation's symbol of freedom, sadly in need of repair, is now undergoing major restoration. Won't you help us preserve liberty, a beacon of hope for nearly 100 years? Please send your tax-deductible gift to WTCN-TV, Post Office Box 111, Minneapolis 55440. Don't let the sun set on an American dream. A series of free events are scheduled for Golden Valley and West Suburban Area Black History Month. For the West Suburban Area Black History Month calendar of events, call 332-3506. 34 warm degrees for you this morning at 644. Used cross-country ski equipment goes up for sale today by the Minneapolis Park Board. The sale is scheduled, to, uh, is scheduled for all week. It begins tonight at 6 at Hiawatha Park. Adults can be outfitted for as little as $55, children for $35. For more information, call Hiawatha Park at 724-7715. And some 1,700 sets of skis are taking time out this morning following the Vasa Lopez cross-country race in Mora yesterday. World champion skier Odovar Braun took top honors at the time of 2 hours, 48.35 seconds. The race, for anybody who raced it or who cares this morning, is 32 kilometers long. That's tiring just watching 30 seconds of it. Yeah, Boy, really. What a race. I'm Ugh. glad they got their exercise yeah. yesterday. Steve Carroll is here. He tells us the North Stars got their exercise, but once again, Shit. down the tubes. Yeah, down the tubes. Really the interesting story, not the big story, uh, out of the Met last night. Uh, Herb Brooks, there was a story in the New York Daily yesterday morning that Herb Brooks is coming back, the coach of North Stars. Everyone that we talked to, including Herb Brooks and Lou Nanny, said, not now. Do we trust that? Well, for now. <laughs> I'm not saying it won't happen, but for now it won't happen. The North Stars have a couple of days off now before resuming their four-game homestand on Wednesday when the big bad Boston Bruins come to town. Now, last night against Quebec, the Stars played pretty well, but a costly mistake by Dennis Baruch gave the Nordiques a 4-3 to three win over the struggling North Stars. The Stars are winless in their last seven games, and their defeat was their 31st of the current campaign, which matches last year's total for the entire season. Highlights from the Met. The Stars spotted Quebec a 3-1 lead before they came alive. Dino Cicerelli snapped a 14-game scoring drought with his ninth of the year as Minnesota closed within the goal at 3-2. The Stars continued to work hard and it paid off when Dennis Baruch blasted the slapper past Richard Savegni to tie the game up at 3-all. But then late in the game, Baruch went from hero to gold as his behind-the-back pass helped set up the game-winning goal as Alan Lemieux blasted a, a shot past Donnie Brope to give the Nordics a 4-3 win and once again, another frustrating loss for the North Stars. This was a particularly frustrating one because we did battle back from a 3-1 deficit against a very good team and, and uh, looked like we were going to get a very hard-earned tie or who knows what will happen in overtime when we, you know, just carelessly uh, uh, gave them an opportunity that uh, they capitalized on with a little over a minute to go. Elsewhere in the NHL last night, the Blackhawks and Red Wings tied 4 all. Toronto Edge Whalers 5-4 in overtime. The Devils and Jets, uh, Jets played to a 2-2 deadlock, while the Rangers clobbered the Islanders. The final there was 9-3. Highlights from the main Madison Square Garden. It was a bench-clearing brawl. Even the goalies got into the act, if you can believe that. 113 minutes and penalties were dished out in the altercation. Now, as far as the game was concerned, Ron Greshner scored a pair of goals to lead the Rangers to that 9-3 win over the Islanders. In baseball, Roy Smalley officially becomes a Minnesota Twin again today. As the deal between the Minnesota Twins and Chicago White Sox has been approved by the commissioner's office, the two teams have scheduled a joint announcement for later today. Meanwhile, it appears that slugger Tom Bernanski's arbitration hearing will go on as scheduled today as the two sides have been unable to work out a deal. Bernanski is asking six, for $600,000 a year while the Twins are offering but $425,000. The arbitrator will settle the, issue, uh, settle the issue later today. The Gopher women's basketball team has a new all-time leading scorer this morning as senior Laura Coonan takes over that top spot. Now, Coonan is the Gophers' starting center, and she's averaging 23 points and 12 rebounds a game. She was the 1983 Big Ten Most Valuable Player, and with 30 points, uh, 35 points in yesterday's win over Michigan, she sets the new all-time mark that was established by Linda Roberts in 1981 by six points. Coonan still has five regular season games left to pat her new mark. 
In high school hoops, let's check out this week's News 11 Sports Top 10 Rankings. Keep it in mind that the playoffs and state tournaments are just around the corner. First in our boys' poll, the rankings are exactly the same as they were last week. White Bear Lake still number one for the 12th week in a row. Minneapolis North is next, then comes St. Paul Central, Columbia Heights, and Wilmer. In our second five teams, we have Jefferson, Rochester, Mayo Park Center, and Rochester John Marshall, while Class A Power De La Salle ranks, uh, rounds out this week's poll. In our girls' poll, not a whole lot of change here either, as Washburn remains on top. Second is Burnsville, then comes Duluth East, while Cold Spring and Corey and Staples, they trade sp uh, spots on this week's poll. In our second five, we have Wheaton, St. Louis Park, Highland Park, Kilmore, and Glencoe. And a reminder that News 11 Sports will televise both the girls' and boys' state basketball tournaments starting March 14th. For which we know there will be a snowfall. Oh, sure. Oh, absolutely. Of Maybe the hockey tournament a week earlier, though. <laughs> okay. Sometime in that area. All right. Thanks, thanks Steve. Steve. Mm -hmm. Still coming up this morning on Sunrise, some pictures that are worth a thousand words. Our Washington Bureau takes a look when we come back. Whatever you're looking for, Larry Reed's Bloomington Chrysler Plymouth has got. I got this Bloomington New Yorker for the luxury. I got this LeBaron convertible for the pizzazz. No down payment, only $2.59 a month. In stock, no waiting. Bloomington New Yorker, Bloomington LeBaron. No down payment, only $2.59 a month. Even, Even twins, twins agree, agree on, on the Twin, twin City best. Whatever you're looking for, Larry Reed's Bloomington Chrysler Plymouth has got. Right in Bloomington, right on the price. Join holiday travel on a trip of a lifetime to the last frontier. Choose from four different itineraries starting from 1799. Tours combine plane, ship, and motor coach transportation. Alaskan tours depart June through August, but call now for your free brochure and your first exciting glimpse of wondrous Alaska. Call Holiday Travel in Roseville, 633-1122. Call soon. Very few things make me angry, but drunk drivers make me mad. Thirty-four degrees at ten minutes before the hour. In a celebrated court case, General William Westmoreland has agreed to drop charges against CBS. That word came late last night. Westmoreland had been suing CBS for $120 million for libel, claiming that he was misrepresented during a network documentary detailing his actions with U.S. forces in Vietnam. Cable News Network Bureau Chief Jeremy Levin should be back on American soil later this morning. This morning, Levin left Frankfurt, West Germany, where he spent the weekend and shaved off his beard. Levin says that he is feeling fine after being held captive by Lebanese kidnappers for nearly one year. He was flown to West Germany shortly after he escaped from his captors last week. And still no leads in finding a growing number of Americans missing in Mexico. Guards at border towns kept traffic tied up this weekend to search for leads linking to missing Americans, one of whom is a former Minnesotan. Many businesses are taking a day off today on this Washington's birthday. U.S. government offices, banks, commodity stock and credit markets all will have locked doors today, as will post offices. And this note, though you won't be receiving mail today, if you send any out, it'll cost you two cents more for a regular stamp. A Life magazine has been in the business of letting pictures tell the story for years. Now some of Life's best photographs are on display in Washington. Jim Benjamin takes a look at some of those photos. Some of them are worth a thousand words. Till the end of time Long as stars are in the blue It seemed no matter where, nor when, nor why it happened, they were there. There to capture the joy and sorrow, the hype and horror, the pain and glory that is Life. They were the photographers of Life magazine. We're the mirror of, of what was happening in the country and the world. And people uh, couldn't wait for Life magazine to come out. And many of the reasons why now hang from the walls of the National Museum of American Art. The new display showcases some of the most compelling photographs from Life's second decade, 1946 to 55. There's Kennedy, the newlywed senator, Ike, as soldier and president, and a young lawyer from California. With teenagers racing around town and Jackie Robinson racing around third, most was well at home, but life wouldn't let Americans forget international bloodshed, the Korean War, and violence in Israel. Years later, John Phillips met the frightened child he'd photographed in Jerusalem. Her husband is a taxi driver, and he invited me, and she said, have a drink, and she opened, and she had all sorts of liquor. And very happy and very fat. 
Not so Taylor, Kelly, Swanson, or Ball. Stars photograph one by one and two by two. If the visitors seem captivated by it all, who can blame them? The reason this is so exciting for people, it's halfway between nostalgia and history. Jim Bannerman, News 11, at the Washington Bureau. That's a marvelous way to look at it. That would be fun to see, wouldn't it? Yes. Coming up, big bargains in our day book. Yes, Diane Rossi has details of a big garage sale, and Sunrise will be right back. Action at the Met Sports Center, Bloomington Sunday, February 24th, 8 o'clock. Tickets at the Met Center box office and all Dayton's outlets. Such stars as Magnificent Morocco, Brutus Beefcake, and Dick Murdoch. Ivan Polish Power Putski takes on Jesse the Body Ventura. Six-man tag team event. Andre the Giant, Black Jack Mulligan, and Mad Dog Bashan on one side. Big John Studd, Ken Patera, and Paul Orndorff on the other. The Met Center, the 24th. Don't miss it. Be there. But what's the point? They're all gonna die anyway. This stuff makes the day after look like a walk in the park, said Los Angeles Magazine. Threads, Friday at 8 on TV 11. Viewer and parental discretion is strongly advised. Black love, black pride, black dignity, black honor. Show black power, don't batter. Call 871 78 Seven, eight. Well, it's 34 degrees for you now at five minutes before the hour of seven. Two separate shooting incidents are keeping St. Paul police busy this morning. Police were called to 699 Hague in St. Paul at about 1 a.m. where they found one man shot. That man is in critical condition following surgery at this hour. He was shot in the chest. Police say they're looking for two men for questioning in the incident. In another shooting on the east side, just a few hours earlier, a man was shot to death at 1242 Hazelwood. Beneficio Pedroso was dead on arrival at St. Paul Ramsey Hospital just before 11 last night. Police say Pedroso was involved in the scuffle when he was shot in an apartment building parking lot. One man has been brought in for questioning. Doctors in Louisville this morning are keeping a close eye on Murray Hayden. A former auto worker became the third American to receive an artificial heart. Hayden is in critical condition, but his vital signs are stable, report hospital officials. Well, two DJs from Milwaukee, Wisconsin are broadcasting live from the Metrodome this morning to protest the possible sale of the Bucks basketball team to a Minnesota group. They plan to move their protest to the state capitol later this afternoon, and Perpich announced last week that two Minnesota groups have expressed interest in buying that ball club. Both a garage sale and Walt Disney are in the daybook. I don't think he's really in the daybook. Well, maybe. We'll <laughs> see. Diane Rossi tells us all about it from the newsroom. Good morning, everyone. We have President Day celebrations for you this morning in our daybook. You can make it a family day by enjoying the Disney film The Rescuers at the Landmark Center. The movie will be shown at 10.30 and at 1.30, and admission is just $1. And another special treat for the kids, this one at the Bandana Square in St. Paul. There's a party to celebrate the reopening of the Children's Museum. Entertainment begins at 11 o'clock this morning with a puppet show. And River Place will play host to the city's largest and oldest garage sale starting at 10 o'clock this morning. River Place merchants will offer special bargains on clothing, shoes, arts, crafts, and housewares. The renovated Brown Ryan livery at 25 Main Street is the location of the sale. That's it from the newsroom this morning. Now back to you. All right, Diane. Coming up tonight in sports, we'll meet our News 11 Sports Athletes of the Week, plus have highlights from the big Twin Cities Hockey Championship. Marty? And we'll have terrific weather for all of that, too. Today, while we are looking for those kinds of temperatures you're finding right now, 34 degrees to uh, warm up to 32 to 37, we do have some snow falling in the area. Flurries right now. We'll have some clearing this afternoon. But you may want to exercise caution as you're out on the roads this morning, simply because some of them are still snow covered and just a little bit slippery. One final note here. Yes. Anybody hungry for I am cherry pie? You've got to be real hungry for this. <laughs> in just a few minutes, you can help yourself. Certix Liquor Store in Northeast Minneapolis will be having an all-you-can-eat event starting at 7. It's an annual event each George Washington's yeah. birthday. The person eating the most cherry pie gets a special prize. And the first 100 customers get a premium bottle of liquor to go with. I'd rather have coffee with that pie, I Can think. Can you do the 825 cut in for me? I um, she's going to be gone. For me. <laughs> Thanks for being with us. She'll be back tomorrow morning. Yes, we do hope that you have a nice day and that you yeah. see us here tomorrow morning at 6.30. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.